I think the first question that we face is what kinds of resources in terms of what level of resources should we be committing as a society to each of the age categories? So you can imagine that when kids are born, what, what amount of resources should we give them early on and essentially give their parents to work with them or give caregivers to work with them to make sure that they succeed and they succeed to the next level, which might be say three, four and five year olds. And then we have another question. What is the level and type of resources that we should be giving them to ensure that they have the best chance to succeed before they enter kindergarten? We've done a fair amount of work on what are the best ways, what are the best curricula to use, what are the best ways in which teachers should teach a specific curriculum. But what we don't know a lot about is how should we allocate resources across the early years versus the later years, and in a way, what are the, we, have a, we have a world of scarce resources. What's the best way to allocate those scarce resources across the, the child's lifetime? Many times I work with psychologists or sociologists or ecologists. And from the very beginning, we all have a shared understanding that in doing this research, we can use PLOS One as an outlet for our work because we all respect the journal. We all agree that it's a good journal as people from different fields to publish in. There are a lot of people from different fields actually reading it. So the exposure of the work is much greater than it would be in any one specific field. So now you've taken care of the fundamental economic problem. You both have demand and supply for this work. I think that the majority of economists would probably say that open source is good and that we would like to do research that is published in open source. Now, where the constraints lie really is that some of our most prestigious outlets are being published by companies that are using this as a profit center. Those outlets tend to have the highest prestige. I, I want my research to change the world for the better, affect the way people think, and I want that research to be read by as many people as possible. And that, that's not always the sole interest of the publishing houses. And I think that's the major thing that we have to overcome is you have this sort of incentive alignment issue that until that's entirely taken care of, we won't move to all open source. And all economists are trying to pursue truth and make sure that the data and the theories that we're putting forward are valuable, truthful, and correct. As economists, we, we have work to do to ensure that the correct incentives are set up for people not only to replicate, but also for authors to give their, give their programming code, give their data, so replications are easier. So I think in that way, PLOS has given a nice example and a nice case study of some of the best ways to do it. And I think in economics, we can follow that initial example and, and do better to make sure of the integrity of our results and the, the reproducibility of our results are, uh, are enhanced.